following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the September 23rd, the uh, terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. Send it early. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday, of course. This is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, all the U.S. indices traded to the upside. The Dow's up 576 points. The S&P 63, NASDAQ 153, Russell 38. Semis are up 49. Gold is off 28 bucks. Silver down 19 pennies. Light sweet crude up 27 cents. Natural gas is up 17 pennies. That's a nice move there. And the 30-year Treasury is basically flat. Trading, well, it's got the wrong contract up there. Sorry about that. I, mean, I know it's not trading flat. <laughs> so, uh uh, there we go. So what is the 30-year Treasury doing? It's down uh, over a full point, trading out at 162.10. Moving to the upside, dollar-wise, you've got Booking Holdings, 74 bucks, Amazon, 35, SVB Financial, 29. That's about 5%. Novavax up 12% or 27 bucks, and BlackRock, 27 bucks, 3%. To the downside, leading the charge is Equinix, off $24, 2 and 3 quarters percent. Ergo, down 15 or 68%. Um, IMAB blah, 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 down seven percent or six bucks. Uh, our kit quantum down six and PTC therapeutics off 13 percent or five bucks. So we certainly have things to look at, but we've got requests. And so let's go straight to those requests before we go to the market out here because we've got four and I don't want to get behind. The first one coming in from Michael W. Michael says, Can we take a look at a, a chart for December wheat contract? This is Mike in um, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Absolutely, Mike. So let's take a look at the wheat contract. Now, here you're going to see uh, the uh, four. I, I mean, I've got listed here the different up at the top. You can see all the futures contracts and what uh, what Mike is asking about is December. So what do we know about December's futures contract? Price is trading into the resistance zone of its bearish structured profile. That's between 710, 60 and 727. 50. Odds favor that price is going to go ahead and take that, uh, is, going to, is going to get up to that level. At least that's what I see when I take a look at this daily chart. Let's pull over our other chart here, the white background chart, for the December contract. So we can also see that price is now above its oscillator and change line, which has acted as resistance uh, um, late last week, early this week out here. So pretty good indication, Mike, that price should target the top of that profile. No indication whether it will be able to take that out or not. Short-term time frame, let's just see if we've got any kind of topping signals out here. Um, nothing that is showing up just yet as a uh, topping signal. Uh, Five-hour chart. Yeah, so it looks like price should be able to make the top of that profile. So thanks so much for writing in, Mike, and hope that that helps you out. Question number two. This one is coming in from David H. David says, hey, Steve, do you think from the charts that Facebook will hit the low of 334.54 of July 19th and or go lower, and if so, by how much? Well, let's put up our three time frame charts here for Facebook. We'll just begin by looking at that, and then we'll go over to 
uh, one of our other panels, uh, our white our white background charts, take a look at what those are signaling to us. I'm uh, just trying to get that set up here so we can be efficient. So when we take a look at Facebook right now, you've got a uh, price below the daily, price is below the weekly set of profiles, and the monthly is way down at 287. So the question was, do we think that Facebook will get down to 334? Yesterday's low was what, uh, three, 343. Okay, let's let's go. Let, let's switch over. Give me a moment here to get this uh, set up. We're going to switch panel screens here because I'm not getting a clear signal here as to whether or not uh, that is the outcome. So let's uh, see if we can find out by taking a look at this set of charts if we've got some type of signal. So on the monthly basis, that's the upper left hand corner. You know, it's generating a Rosman indicator topping signal, but price has got to close below 336.52. So that's a level of support. You're looking at 334. That's pretty close. The weekly, because it's below the profile and it has a, a Rhodesman indicator top, yeah, that says that over time it's going to get down to 303. I'm assuming you're in some kind of a uh, uh, options trade out here. Uh, but if not, it looks like price wants to run lower. And what could get in the way? What could get in the way, at least for a bounce or perhaps a bottom, is the TD9 count. Yesterday was bar number eight of the TD9 count. Today is going to form bar number nine. Now, a lower low can take place tomorrow. But what you're up against on the daily time frame out here, David, is you've got a valid bottoming signal. So then we get valid bottoming signals. We like to look at the shorter time frame chart. So we've got really five that we look at. 195 minute because there's 295 minute bars in a day. 130 minute because there's 330 minute bars a day. 65 because I don't know how many bars there are on the 65, but it's equal time frames. And so we look for bottoming signals here. And you can see on the 65, you got a Rhodes momentum indicator pattern triggered the same on the 30, the same on the 15. What has not taken place just yet is a break of support. On the 30 minute chart, uh, what this suggests to us, David, is if price could close above 349.84, then that would suggest a uh, further rally. And then we would say that more likely than not, Facebook is going to move higher before perhaps it moves lower out there. So it's the daily to watch. Today will become bar number nine. Tomorrow will become the bar following bar number nine. If that makes a lower low, then that's the key threshold level. If not, then it's yesterday's low that you'll be watching for. You want to see a close below that because if you get a close below a TD9 count bottom, that says you've got strong momentum. In this case here, that would be to the downside. So David, thanks for writing in. I hope that that helps you out. Brent from Martinez, California writes in. He says, hey, happy Thirsty Thursday. Back at you. Uh, it looks like there is a possibility of a second day rate of change below minus 10%. So let's get back to the VIX chart here that he's talking about. That would be this. The very bottom panel shows you the one day rate of change. Currently, that's at minus 10.16. And uh, Brent's question goes on and says also the chance it could close below the 50 day exponential moving average. That's panel number two. Panel number two, the exponential moving average is 1864 and price is at 1875 right now. But watch that level. And Brent's question then goes on, if both or either of these were to happen, please provide your analysis. Excellent. So we already had that one day rate of change below minus 10% yesterday. That gave us the initiation signal. I don't have many examples. In fact, I don't have any, any examples that I can go back to. I'd have to do some real mathematics there to see if we had back to back. We don't, I don't need back to back. You get one uh, day where you've got the initiation to higher price. Oh, you don't see the chart. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, that's, that's, that's good old Stevie. Cannot do two things at one time. Thank you, Mr. Bill, my wingman. Here is that chart with the uh, one-day rate of change below minus 10%. And we'll review this again as soon as we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at this chart here. The top of the uh, chart is the S&P 500. It has green or blue arrows. E, the blue arrows represent rates of change that are above plus 10%. In those instances, we know to anticipate and expect a bounce or a bottom, typically within 48 hours. But lately, in the last couple of years, it's been within 24 hours. And then we have the rates of change below minus 10%. Those are identified with those green bars. The very bottom panel is what I use to make that determination easily, whether there was a close above or below the 10% level. So what we know about, yes, and so today, you know, you may have a second initiation move out there. As I said, I don't have uh, any type of data for back to back. But here's what we can say. When the initiation signals work, so let's take a look at the last one. The last one came in on August the 20th. And what we typically, so let me just get to what typically occurs when that happens. Price gets back to the prior high out there. And that most certainly happened on that August 20th signal. In the case of the signal that generated on July 9th out there, that day took it to a higher high. So, okay, at least it's made a higher high. Take a look at the signal that took place out here. Again, these are working signals on June 21st. Price gets back to the previous highs out there. Uh, the same type of uh, signal you get out here on uh, May the 13th. So you kind of see in a pattern out here now when they don't work. Uh, such as the case out here. This was a signal based on March 1st that did not initiate to a higher price out there. So they don't all work. But in this case here, um, this is signaling that we should get back to the highs inside of the S&P 500, at least based upon that pattern. Now, Brent is asking one or the other. Uh, you know, do you need now if you get a close below the 50-day ex exponential moving average? of the spot volatility. So let's just switch over here. You can take a look at the left-hand panel. You can look at my data up top. The 50-day is at 1863 right now, and price is at uh, 1868. Brent, I would say that a close below the 50-day exponential moving average because we have already had the initiation to higher price signal. So we, whether we get a double or not, 
for me, I, I don't really know that it matters. What I do know that matters is a close below the 50-day exponential moving average. And if, in fact, the spot volatility index does that, then that signals to us that what we should see is we should see the ES mini make its way up to the top of its current profile, and that is at the 4483 level. The next level of resistance above that comes from the weekly profile. Now, remember, if you can't bust them down, we're going to go ahead and take the expressions that we were taught here by Obi-Wan Kenobi, by Tom O'Brien. If you can't bust it down, and what does it mean, bust it down? Look, the most important thing, I believe, is understanding where support is, and that is the beauty of these TAS market profiles. If you close below a daily profile, you then immediately go take a look at the weekly profile. Well, we know that this week that the ES Mini closed below the bottom of its daily profile, but what was also transpiring, price was just simply coming back and testing the bottom of that weekly box, 43.12. So it is not out of the question to see a spike or a move up to the 40. 507 level. Now, in order for that to happen, just as Brent is pointing out, you really need to see that VIX spot volatility index close below the 50 day exponential moving average. Okay, Steve O, what happens if it doesn't? Man, if it doesn't, it could be dangerous out there. It could it's just a signal that of a counter it's 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 a signal of a potential counter trend rally. We'd have to go look for some topping signals out there in the short term time frame. So Brent, I hope that that helps answer your question. And and really for everybody out there, the bigger surprise today would have been that the market did move higher based upon that initiation signal that we spoke about yesterday and that we got when the uh, days uh, when a day came to an end. Next question is from David H. in Trumball, Texas. And David wants to take a look at uh, Mosaic. MOS is the ticker symbol out here. Let's go see where Mosaic is trading in relationship to its TAS market profiles. Above the top of the daily, that's today. That says it's in breakout mode. In fact, it's taking out a prior swing point. That prior swing point had volume on the day of August the 11th of 3.8 million. You're already at 2.1. Seems like it's going to have the volume there to take out that swing point. You're above the weekly profile. Uh, you are with inside the monthly profiles. So this suggests to move up to about the 38.23 area. Let's go pull over Mosaic here on the white background charts. Let me read the question. Can you please take a look at the charts? We are. On a daily chart, Mosaic is trading above the swing high. Yeah. Do you think it can go higher? On the weekly chart, should I be concerned about the heavy down volume in early June? So let's get to the daily time frame. And there is a uh, A to B equals CD pattern that is underway. Assuming it, whether it takes that out, the swing point out with volume or not, it looks like it may do that. I'll draw in the uh, price projection, just the one to one, because I don't have the A to B equals CD tool. Uh, on this version of the uh, software. So the one-to-one -one takes us to about the 3550 level out here. Uh, but I don't see on a daily basis, I don't see any signs of any kind of a topping signal. So this actually suggests that price David should make its way up to 3788. You asked about the weekly time frame and the downdraft, the volume downdraft. It's always something to be concerned about. But I would say if on a weekly basis, that means tomorrow, Mosaic closes above 3419, it's generated a bullish signal because anytime you close above a green oscillator and change line that tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero and that is just simply bullish conditions and that would suggest a target of 37.90 so david i hope that that helps you out with regard to uh, mosaic thanks so much for taking the time to write in here we go the next question is coming in from um hector and the fuel injector so hector wants to take a look at, let me see here, let me, let me get this off the screen, and Hector wants to, happy Thirsty Thursday, back to you. Newmont Mining came down strong on Monday, the last two days, including today, are a funko, funky candle formation, a weekly, it looks much like, um, it looks very good, muy bueno, okay, I'm watching to load up on Newmont. What are my thoughts? Excellent question, so let's do this here, probably easiest for me, well, actually, let me get Newmont Mining, going on my white background charts. Let me get, uh, let's go take a look at profile level, see what it's doing on our black background chart. So that's what we've got up on our screen. And we know that uh, Newmont, so Newmont Mining has traded back into a level of support today, Hector. And that level of support is a bullish structure daily profile. So this is a solid profile. So you're gonna wanna watch the levels of 54.39, that support, if price can close above 54.83, that would then signal that price should make its way to the 55.71 level. 5701 is the bottom of that weekly profile, so that's another level of resistance that is out there. Let's pull over Newmont Mining, see what other signals we might be able to find for Hector and Patty. And as we take a look at the uh, daily time frame chart, what you'd like to see is some type of bullish reversal candle. 
And we just simply don't have that. As well, you'd like to see a close above the oscillator and change line, which is about the 5483 mark. So that's on the daily. I think you mentioned the weekly. And on the weekly, the thing that we don't like here in the case of Newmont Mine and its price, now it looks like this could be week number two below the bottom of its breakout level at 5563. So that's actually a signal to anticipate uh, lower price out there. And on the monthly chart, I don't have anything to suggest otherwise, really. Let's look at the 30 minute charts out here. Or the intraday chart, see what kind of signals we have. And as we speak, really not much. So back to the daily time frame out here. What you're really looking for in order to be able to back up that truck, so to speak, now that you've got a new daily profile, is a bullish reversal candle and a close above that 55 71 level. I believe it's 55 70. Yeah, 55 71. If you get that, then that would signal okay to uh, load up the truck. Uh, I don't know if you fully load it up because what you'd really want to see to fully load it up is you'd want to certainly see the ETF or the index, either the XAU or the uh, GDX, and preferably both generate bottom signals. And Hector, we just don't have that as we speak right now. So uh, keep the truck on, but um, don't fill it up. Not just yet. Steve Roach with TFN. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, Jeff near Philly uh, writes in and uh, heard us talking about the uh, wheat contract, and uh, he is looking for a Gartley cell pattern. I believe, to uh, form up in the 744 level. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, Jeff near Philly also recognizes that what the wheat contract did uh, back here on this trading day, this is uh, September the 13th, this generated a Gartley buy pattern. So you've got a Gartley buy pattern, which requires an A to B equals CD, and then, a and then you have had to have a strong move to the upside. Well, certainly wheat did that coming off the low back on July the 9th. So now the question is, is it going to go ahead and make a Gartley buy pattern? Well, in order to do that out here, first you've got to have an A to B equals CD, and you may get that confirmation uh, today. So the A point is going to be the low of the candle session of September 10th. The B point is going to be the high from September 16th. And the C point is going to be the low on the trading day of September 21st. So the one-to-one -one level gets you into the 725.75. You've got 744 as a target. So I'm going to, and I don't have that as an A to B equals CD. So I'm going to have to assume here, we're going to go test it out, see if Stevie's assumption is correct. Probably isn't. But uh, that what uh, Jeff is uh, looking for is probably a 0.618 retracement or so. So let's take a look at what that is. And that gets us to the 744.50. Voila. There you go. So what I wouldn't do, Jeff, is I wouldn't get married to those Fibonacci numbers. Maybe it hits it. Maybe it doesn't. If you do get the confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside, once price approaches, let me get rid of the Fibonacci numbers right now. And I would say ignore them. But once price approaches 725.75, that will be the completion of the one-to-one -one level. At any point in time near that area, maybe price continues to move higher, if you get that bearish reversal candle, that would then be your confirmation of a Gartley sell. But don't forget, you've got an even larger Gartley buy pattern that is in play out here. And maybe that's the reason, really, that you're taking a look at the 0.618 retracement level, because that would be one of the target areas for that pattern. So I think that's what you're looking at. Uh, Jeff, thanks so much for adding to the uh, conversation and writing. And let me just uh, repopulate uh, this uh, set of charts out here with my tools. And let's go to our next question. So the next question coming in from uh, Larry. And Larry G says, uh, when the market... Let's see here. When the market takes dips, I'm always too tepid. I need to be more aggressive. Any thoughts or suggestions? Hmm. Okay. Um, so, sure. My first thought or suggestion would be each of us are controlled by our six human needs. And you need to understand the order of your six human needs because it helps answer why you do what you do. So, if you go to masteringprobability.com, what you will see on that web page is you'll see a link that takes you to your human needs. And there's about 80 questions. It doesn't take that long. It's just a few minute uh, deal. And if you will answer those questions, what I'd like you to do, uh, Larry, if you're going to go ahead and do this, is add to this question, every, each question, add the phrase as a trader. Because right now you're asking me a trading question. And your human needs for trading could be much different than your human needs for just generally speaking or maybe something else, maybe when it comes to your family or what have you. So you'll typically get a reorder. And there's no right or wrong order, but what you need to do is understand that. And then from there, uh, you can uh, create a positive outcomes. Um, you know, one of your human needs, as an example, is significance. Another human need is variety. Another human need is uh, is the opposite of variety. And, you know, you, you just simply want to, you know, have things very structured. Imagine if your two human needs were for variety and certainty, which is really the, the opposite of variety. Man, what a conflict you would have when it comes to trading. So understand those human needs. And then what, uh, you know, I can do is help you to create positive ways uh, to achieve those outcomes. So that would be my first recommendation. The second recommendation would be from a trading standpoint is just simply you've got, you got you need to really understand where support and resistance is. And this week was complicated, absolutely. And the reason that it was complicated was because the Dow Equity Future contract actually did break the weekly profile. Now, this is a daily time frame, and breaking the weekly profile, uh, I'm sorry, the, the bottom of its weekly profile out there, only matters that weekend. In other words, I could just switch over to this chart right here. And now what we can see is everything is above the weekly profile. And what that tells us is there's no change in trend. What made this week 
more difficult is that the ES Mini and the NQ really didn't break the bottom of their weekly profiles. The ES just slightly, nor did the Russell 2000, but the Dow did. So it was a little bit more complicated. But when you understand where these levels of support are, this is not something Stevie just pulls out of thin air. So when I give you these numbers, it's right to the penny out there. Now we use that as guidelines, not as right to the penny, although oftentimes it does get right to the penny, but really understanding support and resistance. And I believe the most important levels of support are going to be the uh, a TAS market profiles. And then the second level uh, that I would be looking at would be the uh, TD9 count uh, breakdown resistance and um, and support levels. As an example, if you were listening to the show yesterday, we made this point, I believe we made this point, that uh, so when we get markets that are moving to the downside, what I like to do is take each of the equity futures contracts and put multiple time frames to try to figure out what is the, what's the progression of the waves? Where is it where we can see clear resistance out here? Now, these are the TD9 breakdown resistance and breakout support levels. And in a bear market, a market that's moving lower, so when I say bear market, I'm only speaking directionally so, or a bull market, Market, only directionally so. So in a bear market, the red lines represent support. In a bear market, support will fail. And we can see on the way down, many key of these horizontal red lines were in fact broken. Now what's happened since we formed the bottom out here? Well, what first happened is price made its way up to the breakdown level. And it did that at about five in the morning on September 21st, 43.93.75. And then it backs off, so it was not able to take that level out. That was just an indication that it was just a counter trend move at this stage. We didn't really get above the uh, 43.93 level until about uh, 9, 10 o'clock last night. And now what we've got out here is prices above its second TD9 breakdown area, 44.33. And so, Larry, where is this headed to next? Where's the next level of resistance? Don't have the profiles up for the 60-minute time frame, but certainly from a TD9 count level, it's going to be 44.66.50. If you're wondering, and if the market does begin to trade lower, and this was, let's just say, this was just a counter trend rally, what's the first level of support that the ES Mini has to break to give you that confirmation? It's right there on paper. It's 43.85.75. That's how these things work. So it's, uh, I would say, understand your human needs, and I've got a way to help you do that. Uh, you'll get a response back, you know, within a few hours typically. And um, I remember add as a trader for each of those questions, and then just try to understand patterns or understand these TAS market profiles. You can buy these just as I have out here, and they're just simply invaluable. So I hope that that uh, helps you out, and uh, thanks so much for writing in and sharing. Uh, we've got Earl in Seminoles. Earl on the phone, or was that just a uh, some other request? Hello, Earl? Maybe we don't have Earl on the phone. Maybe. Oh, we do have Earl. Earl, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Good, good. Uh, good afternoon, Steve. Uh, I'm Thank looking you. at Franco, Nevada. Uh, it doesn't usually trade lockstep with gold. Wondering what your take is on it. So, so are you looking at it? I'm, I'm in it. I just want to know if I should hold it or, or from where it is here. So, uh, you 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 currently hold a position in Franco, Nevada, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So when we get back from this break, let's go review that with you. And it's right now okay. trading into a very key level of support. And that's the low from uh, September 20th. And that low is at 133.70. You certainly don't want to see that broken. We're at 133.87 right now. We'll be right back in just a few with Earl in Seminole, Florida. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Back, folks, we're on the line with Earl in Seminole, Florida. We're taking a look at Franco Nevada Corp. That's FNV is a ticker symbol. And uh, Earl's currently long this position. So, Earl, there's the potential of an A to B equal CD down pattern that could take price in the 125 or 119 area. Let's take a look at the daily time frame. So that pattern has actually been confirmed, but even though it's been confirmed, there was also a bottoming pattern that was put in place about four days ago. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, and that's why I was saying, if you get a close below that candle on September 20th, that becomes a potential problem. And that suggests that more likely than not, what price is going to try to do is fulfill that one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the downside, or maybe more than that. Price is below. This looks like week number three below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. And it's with inside its monthly bear structured profile. Now, the month is not over, but that will take place uh, next week, I believe. And uh, if we do see a close below 139.43, that could suggest moving back to those lower prices for sure, even 94, 97. Any questions about that? And then I'll pull over my white background charts to show you the bottom pattern that formed a few days ago. Any questions about the profile levels in the No, no, that's, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to know, yeah. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, what the, the bullish side and the bullish side of this would be if price can hold that low from the trading day of September 20th. And that low, again, was 133.70. So that's what I, I would watch really for two things out here. And by the way, if price closes below that, this generates a signal that price would pull back to its actual breakout level of 122.53. That's what the daily chart shows us. The weekly chart, just looking again for any kind of signals for us. Nothing there to really speak of. So let me come back to the uh, daily time frame chart. Today is going to form bar number six of a TD9 count. So this also could, if price closes below the level that we talked about, that September 20th low, this still could form wow. some type of TD9 count in the coming days. So the low has to take place on bars eight, nine to the bar following nine. If today is six, so tomorrow will be Friday, that'd be seven. You're looking at between Monday and Wednesday of next week before you might. And I can't say that you'll even get that signal out there, but something to consider. The last thing that I would consider before dumping Franco Nevada is gold. So we're going to go back and take a look at the uh, gold charts out here. Um, so I haven't done the correlation. And you said you were you were you were mentioning gold and Franco Nevada. So is it your experience that they both move in the same direction? Not not always. Franco Nevada is a royalty company right. versus a miner. So right. 
Okay. Uh, so uh, I, I still throw out taking a look at gold because if it, not that Franco Nevada, as you're pointing out, can't go lower, but if gold holds support, and let me just find the chart out here. Give me a moment. Sorry about that. So here is gold. Maybe we'll look at gold this way. So we can take a look at gold this way. You can see that price is pulled right back into support, and that's the bottom of its daily profile at 1749.10. So I would be yeah. hesitant to suggest to you to dump your Franco Nevada position if gold closes below, and you get two consecutive closes below 1749.10, then I see it. Uh, but otherwise, and, and, and look, you're, 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 I'm sure you're right that, that it doesn't always correlate, but I still think it has to be a factor or should be a factor in the decision. Does that help? Oh, it's definitely a factor, but it doesn't go lockstep like GLD. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, that's what I see when I take a look at Franco Nevada. Are there any other questions, any other information? No, sir. Uh, you and Basil are the two best guys I've ever seen, and I know oh. I can count on you. Uh, well, thanks. I, hey, I appreciate the uh, kindness of you. We've got a, a great crew here at uh, TFNN. So, uh, uh, and as well as as well as listeners like yourself, the uh, guys and gals that are in the den. I mean, this is really a beautiful thing. And and what's really great is that uh, you know Tom and Tommy they allow us to just simply tell it like we see it, regardless of what the guy just previous to us or that's coming on afterwards is saying. And and that's that's I know that everybody would like. For us to be consistent in our calls, we use different uh, tools out here. So, uh, Earl, thanks for the compliment. Uh, much appreciated. No, no, I just want to say one thing, Steve. Iron yeah. sharpens iron. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if you know what I mean. I do. I do. I love it. Hey, have a great day. Thanks so much for calling. And best of luck in Franco, Nevada. That was Earl in Seminole. Uh, let's go to the next question. This one coming in from the uh, Tiger's Den. Uh, this is a question about ARQQQ, or uh, ARQQ, one too many Qs out there. So looking for an entry point at some point out here. So this is the Arquit Quantum. Man, not a ton of information out here. This is an IPO, it looks like, that maybe started trading around August the 30th, or maybe it was a reverse merger from something that was back in April, uh, or maybe this has started trading in April. But, man, what a rocket ship to the upside. So not a ton of data out here. It makes it much more complicated to really come up with any kind of um, feel. I can't even the daily bait. Well, that's the weekly. Let me see the daily. So on the daily basis out here, uh, what we can see is uh, I don't know what that blue where that blue line came from, but you've got a bear, big old bearish engulfing candle today. So what I would be looking for is a price pulling back. Is a price pulling back? Is that not the best grammar in the world? I would look for price to pull back to its oscillator and change line. So the first level to look at would be 2276. Really, the range is 2060 to 2276. As price approaches that area, what you want to see is some kind of, and I'll just simply right now call it a 30-minute bottoming pattern. And we don't have that. So we know what to anticipate and to look for. We know a price range to uh, look for. I suppose there's some kind of A to B equals CD pattern up here to give us a sell the D point. But watch for about the 2277 type area. And then uh, right back in to me, and let's see, see if we can find some type of intraday bottom inside of ARQQ out there. So I hope that that helps you out. Uh, let me see if we've got any other questions that have come in. Oh, we do. Uh, we've got uh, two more questions, at least, at this stage. This one coming in from Mike in Ecuador. Oh, that is a beautiful thing out here. And Mike in Ecuador, the first instrument he wants to take a look at is NVIDIA. So since this is a twofer out here, I'm just going to go right to the white background charts. Oh, you got a new profile that is forming today. So your resistance level is 225.04, uh, if that helps you. And your question was just check for resistance. Well, there you go. There's your first resistance level in NVIDIA. And that's on the uh, daily time frame. And that is the top of its uh, profile out there. Um, and it's resistance because the oscillator and change line is there as well. Now, if we go to a short term time frame, price at the high of the day, we're not going to see any kind of. Well, we could see a. We could. Oh, I just deleted it. Nice job, Steve O. Beautiful job, Steve O. OK, so uh, let's go to the 60 minute uh, time frame chart out here. Uh, look, the 60 minute time frame chart is bullish. See, everything happens for us, not to us, even though I've got to recreate the 30 minute chart out here. But the reason that it happened for us is because now if we take a look at a 60 minute chart, price just took out its TD9 count. It did that uh, at the uh, 1330 at the 130 time frame. So uh, NVIDIA is strong on that time frame, but we know on the daily that price is dealing with that resistance level. So if price can close above that, uh, you get back to its all-time high from August the uh, 30th. Your second request 
was to uh, take a look at uh, Moderna. MRNA is the uh, ticker symbol. So let me pull this chart over here. And on Moderna, we're going to see what? This is the daily time frame. The daily time frame says as long as price can close above 452 40, we'll call it 47, 48. That's a bullish signal. And that bullish signal says, okay, well, you at least get back to the prior uh, high out here. That prior high is the high from the trading day of September 10th. But more likely than not, that's at the 464 level, but more likely than not, you head back to the all time high. And that's from August the uh, 10th out there. So, Moderna, uh, the action as we speak today, if it can clear close above that green oscillator and change line, that looks good. By the way, on a 30 minute chart, uh, we could see a short term top that forms between now and 2.30. Um, Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. One last thing, uh, folks, uh, on Moderna here. I'm noticing that the swing point that it's trading into, that's a swing point from September 10th. It's got about 12.6 million shares, and right now you're trading into it about 7.2. So that's going to be your resistance level there at the 464.85 area. You can see on a weekly basis, price is trading above the top of its weekly uh, profile out there, 440.81. So that would be a positive for sure. 
Um, and you need a second close next week above that to give you really a full breakout mode. So hope that that helps you out. Mike writes in. Mike writes and says, uh, the TFNN team is great, but as a listener, I don't necessarily want all hosts to be consistent in their outlooks. Excellent. Uh, because none of us, I, I guarantee you, none of us are talking to each other. Not that we don't talk to each other, but we're not calling each other up and saying, hey, what do you think about this or that? I appreciate different perspectives. It's best to hear a bearish viewpoint and then a bullish viewpoint that I can make my own decision. Respectfully, Mike and New Hampshire. So thanks for that comment. Uh, that's how we operate here. And as Tom likes to say, that's a beautiful thing. So what are we going to do here? Let's watch that spot volatility index today as far as the general markets are concerned. That's that center panel in the upper left-hand side. The spot volatility is currently at 1863. The spot volatility is 1850. Why is that important? Because generally speaking, and that's about all I can say, this chart here, the green and the yellow rectangles and squares, they show how the S&P behaves in regards to whether the spot volatility is above or below its 50-day exponential moving average. And that is the reason that we uh, pay attention to that. Uh, that's important to take a look at. In the NQ, if the NQ can close above 15,332, it's at 15,342, that will then signal to us that this is not a counter trend rally. And in fact, that the NQ should get back to the top of its daily profile. And that's at the 15,557 level. As far as gold today, big move to the downside, but doing nothing more than testing support. That's at 1749, even in the face of the US dollar index trading off pretty well. But the US dollar index has support at 92. 78. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Join us on Terrific Thursday. Tomorrow's show, again, is going to be recorded live from 8 to 9. We'll make it as pertinent as we can for 1 to 2, and we'll look forward to seeing you at one of those shows. Have a terrific Thursday, folks, and we'll see you tomorrow.